Hello, and welcome to the Irresistible Marketing Pod, the podcast that helps you find your voice, claim your power, and let your business fuel the change you want to see in your life and in the world. I'm your host, Issa Gauchi, marketing confidence cheerleader and owner of the M. Issa Messaging Digital Marketing Agency. Today, we are talking about why it's so important for your marketing to hold the vision for your people. So many of us feel really grossed out by mainstream marketing tactics because fear and shame are so often leveraged. I've always preferred to lean into empathy, acceptance, celebration, and empowerment. And for a long time, I really thought this was the same thing as championing hope as a messaging strategy. But it turns out not quite the same thing because there was a big, huge, whopping ingredient missing. (laughs) As it turns out, it's an ingredient you really don't want to leave out of your marketing. That is, if you want your marketing to be irresistible, that is. So let's talk a little bit about how my messaging philosophy has evolved. When I first opened my agency, Misa Messaging, I vowed never to resort to pain point marketing, a tactic that super grossed me out from various corporate marketing trainings from back in the day. No to pressing on the bruise and then offering to sell you something to make it stop hurting after being the one that instigated it hurting in the first place. I was also vehemently against toxic positivity marketing. In other words, the bruise does not exist. You're a girl boss. Squirrel. But as my mentor, Sarah Beyer of Elemental Entrepreneurship likes to say, a way is not a direction. So, As I first started out trying to find my own way to approach marketing that wasn't gross, where I didn't want to rely on pressing into bruises and exacerbating pain points, and I really wanted to embrace hope instead, I started out by going all in with empathy. In other words, I see that painful bruise and I acknowledge that you are in pain. I will hold you while you cry and remind you how strong you are for surviving. I also went all in with acceptance. I refuse to shame and blame you for having a bruise. Your bruise is not your fault. Your pain is not your fault. And of course you're in pain because you have a bruise. This is not an individual personal failing on your part for feeling a normal human emotion. I really wanted to hold space so you weren't afraid to look at the wound and address it. And one of the ways you can address it is through working with me. And I also really wanted to celebrate you for your courage to look at and address the wound, however that may be. So working with me or someone else or just acknowledging it's there and that you deserve treatment and care. I really wanted to empower you so you don't feel as though you should ignore the things that are hurting you. Empower you to prioritize going and getting what you need to feel better because you deserve to feel better. So when I first started my business, this was my messaging philosophy and it's what I used to inform my own marketing and the marketing um, that clients hired me to do. And you know what? It was pretty successful in the first part of when someone first came into contact with us. It got people interested. It got people to um, know, know us, to like us, and trust us, which is another common marketing phrase that like we need to earn that know, like, and trust factor to get people to invest. But I realized in both this approach to hope as a messaging strategy and leaving it at no like and trust is that we were kind of stopping short, stopping short of bridging the gap for customers between, okay, your situation is acceptable. It's fine. We love you. We celebrate you for where you are. You deserve to feel better. But if we just stop there, what action is the customer supposed to take, right? 
what is there left after that if we don't then give them something to aspire to, something to look forward to, something to move towards? Keyword, move. How do we get them to then do something? The thing is, empathy isn't enough to give our people hope. What's the vision beyond the bruise doesn't hurt anymore? Because don't we all want and deserve more than to simply not be in pain? Now, folks, let's talk about want, wanting, desire. What do our people want that we can give to them? This is a loaded question. So if you just felt your shoulders become your earrings or your throat tighten up, um, take a deep breath, breathe it out, release the tension. I know this is a tricky topic to talk about because we are often so discouraged, especially if we are human socialized as women or in other marginalized identities. We have been so societally conditioned to disconnect from our desires in favor of doing whatever it takes for us to survive all this fuck shit. So, desire is terrifying. It's terrifying for so many people in our culture. We're taught wanting is burdensome and selfish. We're taught that we will be punished for asking. We're taught that disappointment hurts worse than keeping our expectations low. So no wonder many of us feel really super duper disconnected from our desires. When we're trying to survive, we don't have the luxury of wanting. So this is why pain point marketing has been effective. If all we can feel of all that's in our frame of consciousness in our vision for the future is the pain, of course we want to buy something that's going to just like make it stop. But when marketing can give us permission to want something, want something beyond just a a relief from pain, that's powerful. When it opens the possibility of getting something we thought we'd never be allowed to have, that's fucking irresistible marketing. So here's how my hope as the messaging strategy has evolved to now and why the results in my business and the customers I'm doing marketing for are like going, going big, not going home. They're just going big. So new philosophy. It's very simple. You deserve to get what you want. That's what we tell our people. You deserve to get what you want. I tell my cheerleading clients this over and over and over again. And almost every single time, it stops them in their tracks when I say, you're allowed to have what you want. You are allowed to want what you want. You are allowed to focus on what you want, to do what you want. Something opens up in their facial expression, like a light seems to turn on from inside them. Like it seems like their skin literally starts to gr- like glow. They look like <laughs> like a Neutrogena commercial or something, like glowing skin. Shoulders drop. Big exhales are exhaled. Their eyes are bright and they tend to look upward. And I think it's because... When they hear they are allowed to want what they want, to get what they want, that they deserve to get what they want, they suddenly have given themselves the permission to start imagining all the possibilities. And shockingly, they haven't been told that they deserve to get what they want, do what they want, be who they want very often. That's why it is so powerful every time I say, you want it, you can have it. 
Here is the main caveat though. I do not try to convince people they want it. If they want it, if they, or excuse me, if they don't want it, they're not an aligned customer. Convincing isn't the job of my marketing. Communicating is. So if I'm offering something that they don't want and they go on about their business, my marketing has still done its job. People do struggle with feeling allowed to want what they want though. So the job of my marketing gives them permission to want what they already want. And like we said, since it's so conditioned into us to disconnect from what it is that we want, some of us might not realize or have clarity on what it is that we actually want. So it is also the job of my marketing to help translate, clarify, and make tangible what it is that my people want. The job of my marketing is to give people clarity and vision around their true desires. And the fun part about giving this vision is that I'm not just giving people a vision. We're co-creating it. I'm opening a little door. I'm lighting a match. I'm sparking something. And then their brains get to take over from there. Their magical creativity, their intuition, their imagination, their unlocked hearts gets to start picturing Who would I be if I got what I wanted? How much more good could I do in the world if I got what I wanted? How much more space, kindness, and love would I have available for the people around me? The pets, the earth, humanity. Who could I be if I didn't have to devote all my energy to just surviving? Where could I go? Where would I go? What would my home look like? How would I feel? Who would be around me? Who would I, would I be hanging out with? What would my hobbies be? What would I wear? What would my relationships be like? What would my bank account look like? Ooh, doesn't that feel so bright and so expansive? So few of us indulge in asking questions like this, sinking into desire, daydreaming on purpose, but it feels so good to do this. And marketing that taps people into this state of conscious, the state of consciousness, that is fucking irresistible marketing. I want you to show your people what's possible on the furthest edge of what they scarcely dare dream of. That is how to use hope to sell. Try it. It is seriously magic. If you would like to make irresistible marketing that has your people dreaming bigger and living better, you are invited to join Club Content Cauldron, which is my four-week creative container happening this April 2023. I will be your marketing confidence cheerleader and provide the emotional support, creative fire, and inspiring community you need for your marketing to finally take off and get you the results you've been waiting for. You can join right now. Check for the link in the show notes. I also want to let you know that I have some one-on-one marketing confidence cheerleading spots with me available still. And as always, When you join Season of Support, which is my three-month one-on-one coaching program, you get access to any of my other courses during our time together, which includes Club Content Cauldron this April 2023. You can also find the link to learn more about that and sign up for my one-on-one coaching Season of Support in the show notes. All right. Thank you so much for listening. 
please send me a DM, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this. If this inspired some upcoming content for you, if it gave you any breakthroughs, I love to hear your feedback. And if you'd like to keep more irresistible marketing episodes coming, please consider leaving a five-star review so more people can find this fabulous and free resource.